Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are making the gorgeous crown for our wreath. Now I still have a whole lot of threads attached to it because we will be using these threads to attach to our wreath. Uh, if you're just joining us new, welcome by the way, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we actually are in the process of making an annual project and there they are now. These are all the pieces for the project. You've got your wreath your um, small pieces that are going to be attached to the wreath so far and this crown was the May project of the wreath um, and it does look a bit wobbly <laughs> but it's only because we haven't attached it to the wreath once we attach it to the wreath it'll look quite pretty all right so in the meantime what will you need today very very minimal of the yarn I mean look it's only like three fingers worth um, very minimal of the yarn I used an eight ply or a DK weight or a three weight yarn okay I used believe it or not different types this one here if you look carefully it's an older version of Bendigo Woolen Mills Stella range which was my favorite I'm so sad that it's gone um, but that's got a bit of bamboo it's got 50% bamboo and 50% wool this is Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton and that has 100% cotton and all the other colors I did use are Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton all eight ply DK weight now you can mix the items like acrylic with cotton cotton with wool just make sure it's all the same weight so this is all eight ply I wouldn't use a ten ply or I wouldn't use a chunky with this um, you probably could have got away with a chunky here because I used two white threads uh, for this to make it look thicker yeah make it look like you know fur whatever you want to call it fur fluff and fluffs um but anyway that's what I did for the crown the hooks I used were and I've got both of them I mainly used let's move everything out the way we mainly used the three millimeter hook we only used the four for the last round there because we doubled the thread now I had a few issues splitting the yarn because this does call for a four millimeter hook but I use the three millimeter hook all right so just bear with me on that you will need your scissors mm, yeah you'll need it you will need two stitch let's try that again two <laughs> stitch markers um, I did grab a sewing needle but we never used it if you're going to weave in all your ends and attach your project to the wreath via uh, safety pins then you need to weave them in at the back or at least tie them in a knot and tuck them under and then you can weave them in um, or pin them down if you like all right so that's that that's that I'm not going to talk anymore I'm just going to let you get started creating your gorgeous crown for our wreath good luck all alrighty guys we're going to start off by making a slip knot and that's grabbing the tail end of your yarn wrap it around your finger once and twice holding it there holding it down there passing your back loop halfway over your finger hold it there passing the other one all the way over grabbing your hook and giving everything a tug yeah that's what you should have don't worry about the tails we'll cut them later we're going to chain 12 and a chain is yarn over your hook and pull a loop through like so once yarn over two yarn over three yarn over four yarn over five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so there's your chains from here we are going to pop a single crochet in that first loop there and a single crochet is just popping your hook in the loop pull a loop through like so You've got two loops on your hook yarn over pull through both those loops you're going to pop a stitch marker in that stitch and that's the top two loops of that letter V looking thing that's our stitch all right and then whoops not even in frame we're going to single crochet in every stitch across all right you've done one we're going to do another one where you pop your hook in the loop pull a loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through both those loops and that's number two into the next three and four five 
सिक्स ओप्स सिक्स सेवन एट नाइन एंड टेन वन मोर यू शुड ऑल हैव इलेवन सिंगल क्रोशेज and the little knot on the end so there's your 11th one right there and your really tight weird looking knot thing okay that will be hidden later so don't worry yeah usually at the end of a row i chain one but we're going to make this piece as small as possible so we're not going to chain one we're just going to flip our work and work along these stitches here and we are going to start our pattern straight away okay so single in your first stitch like normal and you're going to pop a stitch marker in there without losing the stitch and you're going to pop a stitch marker in that one there as well this is just to help you find your stitch at the ends of each row we're going to do a second single crochet but we're only going to start it and not complete it all right so pop your hook in pull a loop through and hold it there grab your first color which mine is the maroon or maroon whatever you want to call it so that's your first color. I'm sorry, once again, all tangled. <laughs> all right, so making sure you're grabbing your gold or yellow, we'll call it yellow for this tutorial, the yellow at the back. Grab your maroon and just pop it on your hook and pull the loop through like so. So pop the maroon tail in the back of your hands. Your gold should be laying in front of you because you're going to crochet over that, yeah? So from here, you're going to grab that gold and you're going to crochet over the gold, yeah? You're gonna pop your hook in the very next stitch with the maroon. Your gold should be over your work because you're going to crochet over it. Pull the maroon through. And what you have is that you may find that everything will loosen up we can tighten that later but yarn over or no you're not you're going to pop the maroon in your hand at the back with your other maroon grab your gold and pull a loop through we can tighten everything later but if you want you can do a gentle tug now and then all you're doing here is single crocheting two one and two but on the second one we're going to only do half the stitch so pop your hook in pull a loop through hold it in your hand for a minute and grab your next color mine is the green pop it over the hook this is the only time you'll use it for the stitch pull a loop through drop the tail now if you want you can hold the tail at the back it might help you yeah and you're going to pop a single crochet in your very next stitch but you're crocheting over the gold yeah so go right into the very next stitch making sure you're crocheting over your gold pull the loop through drop the green and then pass the gold through like so and again if you want a gentle tug not too tight we're going to tighten that up a little bit later as well so don't stress too much about it single crochet in your very next stitch once and start the next stitch hold it there grab your next color and mine is the red so what you should have is maroon green and red okay these are some of the colors that I noticed on the crown actually I noticed more of an orange but I don't have orange so if you've got an orange use the dark orange not a light orange but you can use light orange just for the sake of if you don't have dark like me I'm using the red instead of an orange here yeah? And the difference is because it looks a little bit lighter than the maroon. So pull the loop through like you did your other colours. All right, so you're holding your red at the back and you're going to go into the very next stitch, making sure you are crocheting over your gold. And drop the red and pull a loop through with your gold single into your next stitch i did say i was going to call it yellow but i might just stick to gold and single into your very last stitch where your stitch marker is and mine is very tight <laughs> i think i've split the yarn there <laughs> hopefully you haven't split your yarn but single in that stitch there all right so let's see if i've split the yarn i think i have there it is 
Oh dear, just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. This is really, really tight. And it is tight because we're not chaining at the end of each row. And also we are using a smaller hook size for the yarn. So pull your loop through and do your single crochet. And what you have is that. It's pretty much the colors I saw on the crown, yeah? Now flip your work, we're not chaining anything here at the end. We're flipping our work single into that next stitch there, like so, that's better. And grab your stitch marker. Uh, it's better, but it's actually tight. And once again, I'm splitting the stitch for sure, but it doesn't matter, I'll deal with that at the end of the row. There you go. <laughs> and this particular row here is a row of yellow, row of gold, okay? So single into your next stitch. If you can't find them, just face them towards you. You can see them all there. That's, that's the little Vs you see. You should still have 11 stitches across, by the way. So you're single into the next stitch. Single into your red stitch. Single into your next yellow and your second yellow. Single in the green, making sure you get both of those loops. Single into the yellow. You may have pulled it a little bit too tight, so you might miss the loops, yeah? Single into the next yellow and into the maroon. Don't cut your maroon, by the way. Your maroon needs to be the long length, yeah? And single, hmm, there's two stitches here. I almost missed them. So single into your first yellow, single into your second yellow. Yeah, all right. Taking out your stitch marker. That's your last stitch, so there you go. Flip your work for a minute. And that is the right side of your work. So if you've seen the crown, it has like little specks of color in the round. I'm not gonna do a full crown, so there are other colors in it, but I'm just gonna do the ones that I thought were quite main and sticky outy kind of look. <laughs> sticky outy, can I use that word? I know there was a maroon in there and I know there was a green and possibly an orange, all right? Flip your work. Now you're going to do one single crochet in there, like normal. So the ends never change, they stay exactly the same throughout the whole tutorial. Yeah. At least one single crochet at the end, usually. But we're going to do a second single crochet. But here what we're going to do is, uh, don't complete it, we're going to grab the maroon from the back and pull it through. No one's going to see the back of this. If yours is visible at the back, you need to just cut and start another thread, right? But mine's going to be attached to the wreath. So you're not going to be able to see all those threads at the back, all right? So what we're going to do is start the single crochet. Again, if you don't have enough maroon, just grab another one. Hold your yellow at the back for a minute. Just grabbing your maroon, making sure you're grabbing the working end and not the tail, because you'll need a little bit here, okay? You're going to pull that maroon through, yeah? And you're going to grab your gold, again, a little fiddly, whoops, and you're going to crochet over the gold. But with this maroon, we're going to do, I'll show you quickly without the gold, we're going to do our single crochets in the back loop only, which is that one right there. All right, so you've got your front loop here, and then you've got your back loop. We're doing our single crochet in the back loop, all right? Now, the reason is we want it to kind of sit it looks, looks like it's sitting in the background, okay? So you probably don't notice it. You may even get away with doing it in both loops if you like, it's entirely up to you. It doesn't matter either way, but I'm going to do mine in the back loop. So what I'm going to do is just grab the hook and pop it into the back loop without splitting that stitch, which it already has. Grab the yellow or gold and making sure you have it over your hook because you're going to crochet over it. So you do one maroon, like so. And then you're going to do a second maroon, but in the very next back loop stitch. So go into the back loop, making sure you're crocheting over your gold, 
pull the maroon through, hold it there, pass the maroon in your other hand and work with your gold. Yeah, and pull that loop through. Now you're going to crochet um, over the maroon as well here. But with the gold, again, if this is confusing, just go through both loops for all of it. We're going to go right into the very next stitch and we're going into the full stitch, not the back loop. So grab your maroon and do your single crochet like so. And just do your normal stitch, all right? And if you look carefully, it kind of pushed your maroon back a little bit, which is the look we're going for, yeah? And you're doing your next, your next stitch right there. That's your second gold. You're gonna do a third one here, all right? Once again, crocheting over your maroon, pull the loop through, this time holding your gold at the back and pulling through your maroon, okay? Uh, once again, don't forget, don't leave the gold at the back. You're going to crochet over that as well. So with your maroon, once again, we are going in the back loops right there, grabbing your gold, crocheting over it like normal with one, maroon and you're going to do it in the next stitch the back loop only with the second maroon but only halfway hold it there grabbing your gold and pulling it through and leave your maroon here for the next row and just do two single crochets in gold one and then first one and the second one goes in your <laughs> your last tight stitch right there <laughs> stitch marker stitch all right so that's that and what you have is that so the look you're going for is your work is looking like it's pushing back you can actually see almost looks like a a backwards 3d effect if you will rather than a, a forward 3d effect i hope that made sense so now you're going to flip your work right and you are going to continue it's going to get a little bit tangly but we're not going to use it for very long it's only going to be two more rows and you're doing only one single crochet in that stitch, your normal stitch, your normal first single crochet. Hold it there, again, popping your stitch marker in, like so. Oh, this one's very tight, let's pull it a little bit. <laughs> you didn't see that, did you? <laughs> All right, in the next stitch, you are doing a normal single crochet, but only halfway once again. This time, all your work is in front. You're going to pass your gold forward because all your work is in front of you now. Now picking up your maroon, uh, no don't pass the gold forward, leave it there, sorry, take that back. You're going to start your maroon by pulling it through to the gold, popping your hook under your maroon, hold it there, making sure you're going to crochet over that gold in a minute but making sure you are under that loop and what you're going to do this time is crochet in the front loop only, not your back stitch, not the whole stitch, not your back loop, just the front loop, all right? Before we did the back loops there, now we're doing the front loop, yeah? But before you do, make sure you pass your gold over there, hold it steady, pull a loop through there, through to the loop that we formed before, and then complete your single crochet. So once again, you're going into the front loop there, popping your gold over and doing a normal single crochet. Now you're going to do another one. So we're gonna add another maroon here. So into the front loop of the gold, yeah. And then did I split it? I think I did. Oh no, that's right. Into the front loop of the gold, making sure you're still crocheting over your gold tail. Start your maroon, hold it there, passing your maroon forward for now and hold it in your hand like that. And then just pulling a loop through, all right? Now with your maroon, you're gonna crochet over that maroon. But with the gold, we are crocheting in both the loops, not the back loops or the front loops, both loops. So find the stitch like normal. Now bringing your maroon forward in front of you but you're still crocheting over it and doing your normal single crochet actually no don't complete it sorry just start it it's a little fiddly but just this once 
pass your gold forward and then pick up your maroon and complete the stitch. Now you're going to crochet over the gold tail and once again in that first gold stitch you are going to pop a single crochet in the front loop of the gold, crocheting over your tail, pull the loop through and completing your stitch one. And again front loop crocheting over your gold, pull a loop through, single crochet two. Last one, and we're not going to pull our loop through on the last bit here, so pop your hook in the top loop only, the front loop, pull a loop through, pass your maroon forward where all the tails are, picking up your gold, and that's it. Now you go straight into the next gold stitch doing a normal single crochet not carrying any yarn and jump into the last stitch and I have split it. Okay, so hopefully you don't split your yarn like I have and just do your normal single crochet in that stitch right there. All right, that's what we've got so far. We have one more row like this or very similar to this and then we're going to finish up, which is very exciting. So single in our first stitch, but don't complete it. All right, drop your gold and picking up your maroon. Pull that loop through like so. And it's a little tricky now. We want to pop, oh, I've split the yarn. There you go. Is it, yes, it's in properly. We want to pop our stitch marker in that stitch. So it's a little tiny tricky. See if you can get that in the top of your top two loops of your yellow. If not, don't worry about it. We'll fix it up later. Don't stress. Um, making sure that you're crocheting over your gold. Yeah, You're going into that very next gold stitch. It's very tight, but it's there. But you're not going through the whole stitch, remember? Now we're on this side, so you're going through the back loop. So you've got to find the back loop crocheting over the maroon only before this stitch here and grabbing your gold it is tricky guys but trust me it does make a better crown pop your gold over pull a loop through yeah and notice how I'm pushing that gold right back even though I'm crocheting over it I'm pushing it right back and you do your single crochet yeah go into your next maroon in the back loops only Popping your gold over, pull the loop through, just going to give that gold a bit of a tug at the back and doing a second single crochet. In the back loop of your second last maroon for this row, pop your gold over, pull the loop through, not for the row, for the section, and pull your loop through like normal. One more, gold, one more maroon, which is tight, 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 but it's there, pop your hook in, Pop your gold over, pull the loop through, but don't finish it off. Drop your maroon. That's the last time you'll use the maroon there, but then you're going to use it over here. Drop your maroon. Yes. Pull the gold through. Make sure it's a little tight there. Loosen it up. Make sure it's tight. Now with the gold in that one stitch there, you're putting it through the whole stitch, not the back loops. All right. Pop your maroon over. Pull the gold through. Drop your gold for a second and pull the loop through with your maroon. Once again, you're going into the back loops of your maroon stitches. So pop your hook in the back loop of the stitch, just grabbing your gold, making sure you're crocheting over it. Pull the maroon through and do your normal stitch. Do a second one. Popping your gold over, always in the back loops when it comes to this stitch. Pull the loop through and do your second stitch. Now you have a third one. Pop your hook through the back. Pop your gold over, pull the loop through and complete your stitch. The next stitch you're going to do in the yellow stitch, you're doing it in the back loop, but once again, you're not completing the stitch. So pop your hook in, just make sure you're crocheting over your gold, pull the loop through, drop your maroon. That's the last time we used the maroon, okay? So pull the tail through 
the very last stitch, you would have a stitch marker in yours, I took mine out before, but pop your hook in the last stitch, pull a loop through, just make sure that maroon's a bit tight, and just complete your gold stitch. That is the end. Now, if you wanted to, which is a good idea, I would suggest, cut some of the yarn uh, because it can get all tangled up. And it, look, it already is tangling up right there. So I'm not going to cut the other ones. They're okay, but I'm going to cut that maroon. We don't need that maroon anymore. All right. So cut your maroon, your maroon, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. There's different names for everything these days. But anyway, so cut the maroon and pop your hook back in get ready guys we've got two rows to go before this part of the crown is finished and then we're going to put a base down here yeah so oh, I was about to chain don't chain turn your work but you are going to pop a normal single crochet in the same gold that you are in the same stitch you are in you're going to put a normal single crochet like so and pop your stitch marker in there like so I keep forgetting to put my stitch markers in and I've got it in on the other side now that's good all right, from here, you are going to chain 11. So chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then you're going to put a single crochet in the gold stitch. Now, it's the whole stitch not just front loops or back loops, the whole stitch, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, it's a little awkward because we've got our chains there, and complete your single crochet and you will have that, yeah? Then you're going to chain 11 yet again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 I'm trying not to move my work don't move your work yeah and in that stitch marker stitch right at the end of the row <laughs> of course mine happens to have a split stitch so right at the end of the row don't split your stitch do your single crochet trying not to move your chains well, I hope I didn't move it there doing that there no I didn't that's good all right, once again, we're turning our work, but we are not chaining, yeah? How cute is that? I mean, you could get away with it just sitting like that, but no, we're not going to. We're going to do another bit. You're going to slip stitch in every stitch, but for the first three stitches first. So the very first loop you come to, which is right there, just grab one loop and pull a loop through it once without splitting the yarn. Do it into the very next stitch twice and into the third stitch you're pulling it through like normal but there you're going to chain one and do another one in the same stitch or another slip stitch in there so pop your hook in pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook now slip stitch all the way down until you get to that single crochet stitch All right, um, there is one more right in there. Make sure you're getting every stitch. If it helped to count them, I didn't count, but make sure you're getting every stitch. And the look you should have is that. So it's kind of sticking up on the corner there, almost like a crown uh, dropping, if you will. All right, so there's our single crochet. In that single crochet, you're going to place a double crochet a pico and a double crochet if you don't want to do a pico just chain three and then do your double crochet all right but in the meantime we're all going to do a double crochet in there which is yarn over your hook pop it into the stitch the single crochet pull the loop through and you've got one two three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two two loops left yarn over pull through the last two chain one two and three again if you don't want to do a pico just put another double crochet in the stitch but for the rest of us we're going to pop our hook through those side loops there pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook and that is a pico 
yarn over your hook straight into the next I'm sorry the same stitch with a double crochet pull through two and pull through the last two Alrighty guys, so where we are is here. Now the idea is to bring your slip stitches all the way across until you get to your blue stitch marker. But what I want you to do is the blue stitch marker is your last stitch and then you've got these loops one, two and three and in that third loop right there I want you to pop another stitch marker. So grab your next stitch marker. Let's do that again. So we're in that stitch right there. So you go one, two, and three, right there. So you're three stitches off the front. I'm sorry, off the back. When we did our other side, we were three stitches up. So now you want to be three stitches up. So grab your thread. Ooh. All right, so what you're going to do now is you're going to slip stitch in every stitch until you get to that first stitch marker. So you grab your stitch and you slip stitch across like normal. So here, you can get that stitch marker steady, pop your hook in, pull a loop through, do your normal slip stitch, taking out that stitch marker, like so. Chaining one, slip stitching back in the stitch, pull a loop through, like so. Easy part now guys, we're slip stitching in the next, oh, if I can find the next two stitches, very tight here now, towards the end. <laughs> It would be. One more. There. And then when you get to the last one, what I want you to do is to not slip stitch. I want you to pull, cut the thread first. Grab your scissors, giving it a cut. Oh, I did that off here, I'm sorry. And you're just pulling that thread through like that. Just give it a gentle tug. We're going to sew this down to the um, wreath, right? But before we do any of that, we're going to flip our work and do one final row along here with the cream or the white, whatever you have in stock. So let's grab our white and do the base of our crown. All right, so here is our white. Before we do, all these tails, don't chop them yet, all right? Just pop them all at the back. Well, firstly, you're putting your white on the right side of your work where there are no tails. So just turning your crown upside down and you're going to work along these stitches here. You're going to change to a four millimeter hook because with the white, we are going to use double strand. So double your strand. I tried using double strand with a three millimeter hook and it was just chaos, right? So <laughs> it didn't work at all. So use a double strand and go up to your four millimeter hook and pop your hook in that very first stitch there, grabbing your tail ends of your white and just popping it over your hook. Now leave yourself, I don't know, plenty of tail because you're going to use this to attach uh, to your wreath when you are doing your wreath. Now, if you're not doing your wreath, still leave a bit of a tail for weaving in, yeah? So you're pulling a loop through that stitch like so. Just grabbing the tail ends of your yarn, pop it forward. We're gonna lock it into place first. So we're gonna start off by making a chain one and single crocheting in that space over the tail. One. You don't need to put a stitch marker because we're only doing one row. Single again in the same space, two. Now your tail's kind of locked into place so when we weave it in later or when we sew it to our piece it will be sort of in the middle but at the back where it's not sitting on the edge. Yeah. So now we're going to single crochet in every stitch until we get to the last stitch. So you have to find all your stitches and do one single 
crochet one all the way through until you get to your very last stitch and it's super duper easy this part in comparison to how difficult the color changes were before this is so easy <laughs> and we've used double the strand to make it look like the fluff at the base of the crown you know the frizz I don't know what you want to call it fur if you will <laughs> fur all right I've got about two stitches left there I'll show you a nice close-up there's one and there's the stitch with the chain in so we'll do the first one or the second last one I should say and the one with the chain leave this tail you're going to help weave this one and attach it to your wreath um, if you're not going to attach it you need to pop it at the back and weave it in at the back right but if you are going to attach use that tail to attach so pop your hook in your stitch but grab your tail and pass it at the back holding on to it with your fingers and then do one single crochet and guess what you're going to do a second one and that's actually your final bit of crochet here pull a loop through like so nice long tail because you're going to use that to attach to the reef on this side of your work right so cut your work and now you are going to sew that thread into there instead of slip stitching into that stitch marker you're going to sew it into there so grab your sewing needle all right thread your needle now guys I've picked up the wrong needle here so it's a really thin needle oh but it worked how about that it's very lucky it worked all right so what I want you to do there's your stitch marker I want you to grab your sewing needle and I want you to place it in the back loop of your stitch marker there's your stitch marker stitch you've got a front loop and a back loop you're going to place it into the back loop all right what I want you to also do is take out that stitch marker for starters all right so you've placed your sewing needle in the back loop and you've pulled it through like that yeah then you're going to bring your thread back over like so and go straight back into and if you don't know where it is you can stretch it a little bit but it doesn't matter straight into the stitch you can go into any other stitch that's close by it doesn't really matter and you're pulling that thread at the back so your thread is now officially at the back and that is your little crown super duper easy yeah done oops I'm not even in the frame there you go there's your crown right there right now all right so the deal is bringing your thread back here the way we've done it we can actually attach your crown to your wreath when our wreath is ready to be attached or when our crown I should say and other pieces are ready to be attached now that would happen it was going to happen last week but we kind of ran out of time and it didn't happen I don't even know why now <laughs> but it's going to happen next week all right so on Monday of next week we are going to attach all the pieces that we have made so far and the reason we are waiting until Monday of next week is because yours truly wants to get um, the next item out let's try it again the next item out which is the Easter item which we missed as well uh, we'll be making a an oval Easter egg with some colors that I may have in my stash here and it's great for stash busting as well so if you want to go ahead and make our easter egg that will be happening next week as well all right there's your crown join me next week to create your easter egg and then we'll attach all our pieces to the wreath so thank you very much for watching don't forget to like subscribe and share do all the wonderful things that you guys well pretty much always do for me and i will see everyone on the very next tutorial ciao for now